Understanding Science Implications in Society, Agri-Food Democracy, an Active Learning Tool, by Merche de Renovales, Leides Cajedo, Isabel López Calderón, Miren Gorrocha Tegui, and Ana Rocandio, five investigators from the universities of the Basque Country and Seville in Spain. The working group behind this project is composed of a total of 16 investigators from 13 institutions in Spain, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America, belonging to widely diverse disciplines from experimental sciences to law, philosophy, sociology, didactics, and applied bioethics. The common denominator for all of them is their interest in transmitting multidisciplinary scientific issues to university students who in their classes will be exposed to only part of a given issue. Genetically modified foods, GM foods, is a good example of a many-sided current controversial subject fueling a heated social debate, at least in Europe. Therefore, we decided to use a problem-based approach to put the students in a situation in which they had to critically examine scientific, ethical, social, legal and political issues related to GM foods. The students would have to exercise critical thinking when facing different points of view, learn to differentiate science-based facts from opinions, and in the end be able to make up their own minds. We have developed a role-playing game directed to our students from science, law, sociology and bioethics degree programs. So far we have tried this role-playing game with our students in the following courses. Law and Ethics in the Biosciences, Transgenic Foods, Social and Legal Aspects of Biotechnology and Molecular Biology. The social debate surrounding GM foods in Europe appears to be insurmountable. According to the 2010 Eurobarometer, about one-third of the Europeans consider that GM foods should be encouraged and this number is lower than that of the 2005 Eurobarometer, as you can see in this figure. However, there are wide differences among countries. For example, in the UK, 44% of the citizens think that GM foods should be encouraged, but only 10% in Greece would go along with that. In countries where GM crops are grown, like the Czech Republic, Spain and Portugal, for example, more people are in favor of GM crops than in countries where they are not grown. Many issues get entangled around GM crops which favor controversy. Among them, perhaps the most significant are the following. One, the science behind it is not easy to understand. Two, among the many stakeholders involved, there are widely different and often opposing economic interests. Three, positions in favor or against are backed by political parties who oppose them 100% or favor them 100% too. The question is so ideologicized that it is almost impossible to discuss it in a relaxed and detached manner, taking into consideration the necessary scientific results. Four, there are also ethical and even religious issues which are very important for many people. The science involved in understanding GM crops is not easy for many people. In addition to learning how transgenic crops are made, it is important to know what methods and technologies are currently used to improve the non-transgenic plants we eat. Then we will know that the genes of conventional plants are also modified often with procedures that do not occur in nature. Safety considerations are of course of paramount importance and it is necessary to have a general idea about how transgenic plants are evaluated prior to commercialization. Environmental aspects have to be taken into consideration as well and at least from a scientific point of view, the question of whether organic farming is compatible with the use of GM seeds should also be addressed. From a socio-economic point of view, 
The involvement of large multinational companies is most questionable for many people. Certainly, there is concern that multinationals could exert undue economic pressure in developing countries or control the seeds of important food crops. In Europe, at least citizens get a mixed message from politicians. On the one hand, the European Commission widely supports biotechnologies, whereas on the other, it tolerates the safeguard clause under which several European countries have prohibited GM foods and crops. Local authorities in many places have declared their territories GM-free areas, something which is not legal. Citizens wonder about the safety of GM foods because they have to be labeled. Some multinational NGOs, which are highly respected by society, are adamantly against GM plants and foods, with little opposition from politicians and political parties. Many people wonder how decisions are made in the EU and who makes those decisions. We teach a variety of courses covering different aspects of science in general, and GM plants are considered as an example of what modern genetic engineering can achieve. It is very difficult to cover most of these questions in a formal manner in our courses because of their different perspective. So, a role-playing game appeared to us to be an excellent teaching tool which would make students get involved in real-life situations and take an active role in learning instead of taking notes. Discussions among themselves would force them to consider different points of view, look actively at data, and make up their own minds. In addition, they would have to practice working in groups. The situation in which the role-playing game takes place is the following. The European Commission has gathered a diverse group of stakeholders to express their opinion about the future of GM maize in Europe, specifically MON810, which is one of the two crops allowed to be grown in Europe. They have to come up with a proposal to continue its cultivation or not. The instructor decides when to distribute the roles to the students and does so by lot number. Depending on the course, students are given the complementary information needed to prepare their roles. For example, in my transgenic food courses, I have to provide the students with sources of information regarding agriculture and the primary sector, not like no-till farming, livestock raising, etc., and some bioethics background. Other members of the research group who teach law and ethics in the biosciences need to provide scientific information in an easily understood manner. Students present their roles in about 10 minutes with the help of a PowerPoint presentation. For the next hour or so, they debate among themselves, asking questions, and providing further information as requested by the other role players. Then each role has to make a proposal trying to reach a consensus in the group and the proposals are voted. The following are the roles that we have for the game. The consumer, who can be in favor or against, or both if there are enough students, is the person in charge of purchasing food for the family. He or she or she chooses healthy, varied, good tasting food with the, within the family budget. Would he or she buy transgenic foods? The primary concern of the organic farmer is to produce natural food, healthy, more nutritious, chemical free, at a reasonable price and an env in environmentally friendly way. The students are referred to the regulations of the European Union. The conventional farmer also wants to produce high-quality food at reasonable prices, and he or she too is concerned with the environment, but he or she realizes that some chemical products are necessary. European farmers find themselves at a disadvantage 
because certain transgenic foods can be imported but not grown in Europe. The scientist who is developing drought-tolerant maize should discuss what transgenic foods can contribute to the quality of life for people in Europe. The member of an NGO needs to find out what is important for small farmers in developing countries. Because situations are widely different and depend on the country, this person should focus on just one developing country and learn about their needs. What would she or he advise them to use? Why would he or she advise them to use transgenic seeds? Any type of transgenic seeds? Certain types only? Which ones? Why? Explaining the position of a multinational seed company, which makes and commercializes transgenic seeds, is not most of the students' favorite role. Yet they need to understand their position, how the environment in Europe affects them, and what influence the situation in Europe has on the short, medium and long-term perspectives for these companies. The European livestock producer is affected by the current situation in Europe because feed prices are raising well above production costs. To facilitate the work of the students, they should decide what animal products they will produce in their farms and find out details about these operations. How does she see the future for her farm? Our experience with this role-playing game has been very good, even though it implies more work than conventional written report and oral presentation, both for the instructor and for the students, it is clearly worth the effort. Students enjoyed it very much, took an active part in their learning procedure, immersing themselves in their roles, gathering relevant information, presenting and reasoning about it. From our point of view, it is preferable to a classical debate because although students defend their roles, they can change their minds without feeling that they gave in to someone else's data and reasoning. It can be easily adapted to situations in different countries by modifying the roles and the information they provide to the rest of the participants. Thank you very much for your attention.